Welcome to episode number 75 of the round table. It's our diamond anniversary for people that talk about all things on the diamond, right? Right, guys. Uh, I'm Grant Brisby. I'm here with Andy McCall and Mark Craig. Uh, Andy, you're shaking your head. You go. No, man. I'm just, uh, we got to figure out what we're wagering for next week. Do we, we let's get let's talk baseball before football, but yeah, that's a good teaser because the, the Eagles are playing the, the Niners and it's a big scary game. I'm not scared. Mark, what's up? <laughs> I'm annoyed that the Vikings didn't throw that tight end the entire first freaking half yesterday <laughs> because it cost me a parlay. Okay, like 12 wow. yards short, 12 yards short. It's like the first time ever that dude didn't catch a ball in the first half, he does it once. And we're making some money. Oh man, no, Folks, that's, that's you won't get more brutal. ethical um, coverage than you will at the athletic. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean that's <laughs> that's brutal. I had a similar loss where I put a bunch on Blake Snell being unanimous Cy oh Young. God. God and damn. Logan Webb uh got a got a vote, you know. So <sighs> the worst. Anyway. <laughs> Worst. All right, let's talk baseball. There's a I wouldn't say the stove's super hot right now. I'd say it's like a lukewarm, you know, you can you can get a simmer going. Stove's on. Yeah, you know, it's like you can get like you're putting the that that mulling spices on. Like, you know, you're not boiling water, you're just kind of simmering. Um the Cardinals are doing things. I guess we can start with the Cardinals. Um they have spent a fair chunk of money to uh get starting pitchers. Are you scared of their rotation now? Anyone? Um, not if I'm a – no, I'm not scared of anything, Grant, except for dying. Uh, look, I mean, I think that getting Sonny Gray Great. at that price point and that length of a deal, it's hard to dislike it, right? I think probably – I don't want to speak for the pod, but I think – I feel like we probably all favor shorter contracts with higher AAV over longer contracts that spread it out, I think, because we all know what happens to free agents uh, as they tend to get worse and often fall off cliffs and things like that because they're older players. So getting Sonny Gray, even if it's theoretically post-peak for what is age 34, age 35, and age 36 seasons, right? Like when he's been pretty good since he left the Yankees in 2018 for three – you know. That feels that feels like a good a better deal than getting him for six years, um, just because the downside risk is so much less significant. You know, Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson. It's kind of like, all right, I get it. You know, you need humans to throw baseballs uh, to the catcher, and you know, Lance Lynn. I would bet on him. You know, probably being better than he was last year, and I think Kyle Gibson's a perfectly fine back end star, but it doesn't really like. It's really about like Sonny Gray and then, you know, whether or not I guess there's a little bit of dead cat bounce with Lance Lynn. Although the idea of me saying to his face that he's a dead cat bouncing seems funny. Um, But you know what I mean? Like, I I don't know. No, I mean, I like I went through. I tried to place a bet that Sonny Gray's contract would be the best of the offseason. My bookie said that there's like no real way (laughs) to measure that. And so he wouldn't let me. But I still think that's. Mark is dying. You got to watch this on YouTube sometimes. <sighs> um, uh, but seriously, I think that's going to be the best like contract of the offseason, perhaps. Like you're going to look, the dust is going to sail, and you're going to look and go, what was that all about? Like great move, great move, great move. Uh, Cal Gibson, the signing surprised me because he's been on the Orioles or he's been on the Cardinals for the last like eight years. <laughs> Maybe yeah. not actually on the Cardinals, but in spirit, what right. a Cardinals ass pitcher is Kyle Gibson. <laughs> yes. I mean, just like yes. through and through, you know, Lance Lynn would have been, but he was actually on the Cardinals. Right. Um, it, it an- just, you knew him from another life when his name was Jason Marquis. <laughs> it's just straight up Kyle Loesch. You know what I yeah. mean? Like it's, uh, I don't know. I just, I do think that you need bodies, but you're, you're filling it out with Steven Matz and then uh, whoever you can get up from the minors. And you're talking uh, the ages uh, starting next year, 34, 35, 36, 36, turning 33 in the middle of the season you're going to need some help from the minors and you know they're they're maybe gonna need it more than i don't know like i don't know if uh matthew liberatore's you know he's got an option so i guess they'll they'll figure that part out but i don't know it's it seems super risky and maybe not enough in the collective in the aggregate remember when it was just the first two guys it, it was Lance <laughs> Lynn first and then Gibson second. Funny. And, and right. Like, and, and so 
Grant just shared a bit of our like internal podcast chat because then we we're just like, when is John Tudor showing up? Right. <laughs> right. Like, we're, let's just call all, let's round up the old gang. Ken Forsh. Right? Come on, there, baby. There, 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 Ken did, did you use Forsh? I think you did, actually. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I, I look at um, the Sonny Gray signing and I think that's a really interesting one because. Uh, yeah, like to Andy's point, right? You'd think that other teams would have been super interested in something like that. But remember, and this is not a knock on the guy, all right? But I think with a guy like Sonny Gray, with the experience that he had in a place like New York, hmm. like, you know, being mindful of the market that you're signing up for is going to matter. And, and I feel like, you know, again, I don't, it's almost unfair to base all of these assumptions on like a rough run in New York. But I think, you know, in, in, in retrospect, and, you know, there have been bits and pieces of come out of th about this. Like, yeah, it was a struggle in that market. And so going to St. Louis, right? Like, and again, those people are, want winners and whatever. Like, it, it, and they've been, I said this a, lot, a couple of weeks ago. They're the best ago, fans right? in baseball. There, there you go. There it is. So, um, you know, like they, they lost 90 games for the first time in like 30 years or whatever. Like, they obviously have high standards there. But, um, it is also a market that, you know, isn't usually eviscerating their players when they struggle. And I think um, that matters some, you know, was, so. Was Sonny Gray's issues in New York market-based? I thought that was like dealing with the pitching program. No, I mean, I think it was market-based partly too. All right. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Like, and that's, again, and I, I hate saying that because it like, you know, it's not a judgment on a guy, but these are human beings and individuals are individuals. And like, and, and some folks just, you know, it doesn't fit. Right. And in that particular case, I think it was sort of the market. Like, you know, the person who says this a lot, CC Sabathia, mm -hmm. right. And he's a pretty self-aware guy. Right. And like, and he knew what he was signing up for. And I think he thrived there because he knew that, you know, it was a personality type that could handle some of that stuff. And that's not to say that Sonny Gray's lesser or whatever. He's just, different it's a different dude like how many yankees people or pitchers have signed their struggle leave there and they're back to what they were yeah right and i think like you know you'd be you'd have to be foolish not to think about that experience when remember like free agency for these players is a big deal because they get to choose right like like it, it's it, and that's a big deal so i wonder right if st louis sort of had an edge in that regard for hey, this is a place where I could see myself. Fitting Probably, in. yeah. You know, know like it, it's a four or five hour drive from where he grew up. You know, and went to college outside of Nashville. You know, all that stuff. Like, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. I, I, <sighs> and the money helps. He got it's the, a good deal. Yeah, he's getting twenty five. Getting right. paid. Yeah. Right. So right. I think for the Cardinals that? though, like, okay, so what you bank on? Let's say, yeah. Let's you know be fair. One hundred and sixty innings from Sonny Gray next year. Right, because uh, he has dealt with some health stuff, you know, minorish stuff in the recent years, is three hundred innings from Lynn and Gibson going to be all that different from you know the three hundred accumulated innings they were getting from you know it, it has to be better than what Adam Wainwright did this year, um, you know, but like I I don't know I don't know it I think I would feel a little bit if I were a Cardinals fan. Um, and I was, you know, having a slice of pizza with Provel on it um, <laughs> after an appetizer of mozzarella sticks called uh, toasted ravioli. Um, I would wonder why they jumped so quickly on guys that look more like backfilling, I guess, bulk. you know, bulk. Yeah. Like at, at reason, you know, 10 million for Kyle Gibson. I mean, he had a, like a five the last two years like i i would be curious to know if they're you know i don't know maybe you know they can still add more pitchers but you would like guys with maybe a, a little bit less uh assuredness and me like i'd rather spend that 10 million on a guy who might uh, turn into like you know Alex Cobb or something like that. You know like what I mean? Lucas, like Lucas Giolito. Like you have like a ceiling there. Yeah, you... I mean, right. You can't just say like you know who's the guy. Oh well, they should go get Jack Flaherty. No, Louis that's Severino. Not, that's you know. not a fit. You know, but like yeah. I, I don't know. Like the, the downside risk with Severino is he pitches five games and is terrible. Right. 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 Uh, whereas like you're just kind of locking in four hundred. You know, two hundred to three hundred innings of like four and a half ERA baseball. Eh. 
I don't know how crazy I am about that. And I will say that there is a, a Cardinals fan right now who's still steaming uh, that I pronounced uh, Matthew Liberator's name Liberator. wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah. And also the idea that they're counting on him when he's kind of fallen out of favor a little bit. Uh, they're maybe counting on Tink Hence. And I bring <laughs> that up just because I want to say his name, Tink Hence. It's an all-time great baseball name, but he's 21, and he, he just had a cup of coffee in uh, yeah. AA last year. So I don't think they have that upper level like, oh, well, we can just mix and match all day long if one of these guys goes down. I, I, I'm i not seeing that. Maybe I'm missing something. I'm not a Cardinals expert, but yeah, it's it, you're locking yourself in for banality. Right, right. And just given like how far away they looked last year, right, and how kind of locked in the position player core is, I – uh, look, on the one hand, right, they have like solutions, as it were, right? They, they can be more targeted or whatever. They don't have to worry about backfilling. But um, if, the, if it finishes with these three as, you know, rounding out the rotation, I think you feel pretty good about Gray as long as he stays healthy. And then sort of like, OK, we really need Miles Michaelis to be better. Right. Like we really yeah. need Steven Matz to pitch like a four and not like a seven. Right. Yeah. Like it's, you know, uh, and then, you know, the position player talent is there, obviously, uh, or right, has demonstrated flashes of being there. But yeah, I, um, it's a, it's, it feels like almost anticlimactic in some ways, given how much we knew they needed guys who miss, missed bats. Right. Right. Well, I mean, I think we said it at the time as a group remember that like hey we should get dudes at miss bats well good luck because the other 29 are chasing the same thing <laughs> right right okay like welcome to the party I, the other 28 the a's are chasing whatever all right so like you know <laughs> the problem was always going to be the scarcity of that there's a reason it's so valued it's there's not a ton of it out there so you know i'm looking at the ages of these guys so this is the starting rotation right now on the on the fan graph depth chart right so sunny gray 34 miles Michaelis. 35. Yeah. Okay. Kyle Gibson, 36. Lance Lynn, 36 and a half. And Steven Matz, who's 32, but like he's been hurt so often that, yep. like, you know, he might as well be a mid 30s guy because he's just never stayed healthy. So, and then when he has been healthy, like, you know, the performance has been an issue. So, um, you know, just on like risk of injury and age, man, that's some scary stuff even yep. though i do i mean and sunny gray is the youngest guy there that they signed another reason to like the deal like you know again like pretty you know i i thought that was a nice aggressive move I mean, he's a top 10 free agent on our board this year um but yeah like that's uh, just taking a glance at that like that is precarious um especially given like all uh, the talk they they did about having to shore this up um yeah that's what's rough you know, I will say that when it comes to missing bats or not missing bats, the Cardinals should have a good defense. You've got Arenado, you've got Edmund, you've got, I think uh, Gorman's a little bit raw, but I think he's got some potential. You got Goldschmidt. Uh, they should be okay with infield defense if you've got guys who can put it on the ground. Uh, Lance Lynn, not exactly a put it on the ground sort of guy. He's like a put it in the air and, and hope yeah. it comes down in the ballpark. But still, like you, the Cardinals have a good defense. Their lineup, I look at it, and uh, they're the new squints. You know what I mean? They're the new, yeah. <laughs> you can see it, the, the red squints. Uh, the, Boston, the red squints, the St. Louis squints. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, squint, you can see it. I don't hate this idea. I just don't. I could imagine being a Cardinals fan and going, Ugh. Yeah, and and just like to to Mark, you, you know, Mark made the point that you know the other teams are chasing, you know, they're, they're all chasing the same thing, right? But there's actually a good amount of swing and miss on the market. I mean, there's not, you know, it's not like one guy. It's not just Yamamoto. It's not just Blake Snell. You know, it wasn't just Aaron Nola. It wasn't just Sonny Gray. I mean, you know, uh, there's uh, you know there, there's Corbin Burns who's probably not. It sounds like as of right now, probably won't get moved, but at least is like they're listening. Dylan Cease, Tyler Glass now, uh, you know, Shota Imanaga uh, is going to be uh, posted. You know, like there's – there are more it, – it's easier to find a starting pitcher who can, you know, strike out a batter per inning than it was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so for them to default – to guys who, you know, kind of fit that older profile. I thought, you know, look, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to break old habits. They like what they like. You, you know who would have been a good fit for them? 
Jordan Montgomery. And I'm saying that half to be <laughs> cheeky, but half because it's true. You know what I mean? Like that, yeah. that was a good fit at the time. It was a good fit back last season and it was a good fit this season, but I'm guessing his price tag was just too, too high after that postseason. Yeah. He's younger. Um, you know, he's younger. I think he hasn't like made the money that Sonny Gray made, you know, cause Sonny Gray's like had, he took some, I think it was a pre, not a pre-arb deal, but some sort of pre-free agency deal that like mm-hmm. kind of set him up where it's like, Hey, if he manages his life properly, he doesn't really have to worry about cash moving forward. Uh, whereas, you know, Montgomery's gone through the ARB system. He's like three years younger. He might be, I don't know how old is Montgomery. Yeah, I mean he's thirty. That's just that's just so different. When you're a thirty year old pitcher and you know Scott Boris is your agent, like you're not taking three seventy five. Does Scott Boris represent writers? Uh, <laughs> my contract's up with the Athletic, and uh... <laughs> they have to be elite ones, Grant. Yeah, Ooh. no, that's what I'm talking about. Grant, are you a generational talent? I. I mean, I'm not not a generational talent. If Scott was representing you, you'd be a generational talent. Well, we know he oh, employs it. Because what it would is, he say about me? Oh, would yeah. you say what that I, I, I can grant the athletic three wishes? Oh, maybe yes. Some more? Yep. Go, keep going. Um, keep going. Uh, yep. Yep. Yeah. Go you know, this. when you're tossing the brisbee around, you're yep. sure to catch it good, right? Yep. Exactly. Okay. Yep. okay. No, okay. keep going. This is good. I feel uh, like this is the winter meetings preview already. Okay. This yeah. this this, this uh, signing has a buzz around the arena, and it's coming from a brisbee. Oh, Ex- I mean, keep going. Keep going. Hey, hot. Yeah. Okay. My middle name is uh, Roger. So uh, Roger that. No, God damn it. Cut that. I didn't mean to announce that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Keep that in. Are you embarrassed about your middle name being Roger? No, nah, it's my uncle's name. Oh, that's so, nice. Yeah, he, was a, oh. he was a hippie up in Oregon. Passed away recently. Uh, mm. Nice yeah. work, Andy. Jeez. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry to hear about that. <laughs> we dedicate this episode to Uncle Roger. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, anyways. And to flinging the Brisbee around. Flinging the old Brisbee around, huh? Let's go, baby. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I could probably get like three t- three thirty if Boris were my agent. Yeah. Like you know, thirty dollars. The, 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 yeah. the teams are lining up for the ultimate Brisbee. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, all right. Well, that I think killed that Cardinals discussion talking about me. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, like, it's early, man. The stove is on. But it's not buzzing just yet. I one thing you know that I think is a little interesting is that um, we've kind of there's been three relatively major pitcher signings that, or three multi year deal pitchers signings that I think have kind of in some ways uh, 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 set something of a market right. So Aaron Nola's deal uh, is seven one seventy two. Um, Sonny Gray at 375 and then Kenta Maeda two for 24. So that's like you kind of, you know, those are three different tiers of type of players. You kind of have an idea, at the very least, of like what kind of the, the floor ceilings are. And so I think that at least provides something of a of a framework. Um, I do think, though, that, you know, one of the things that often you see in this market is like in order to get someone at in November, right, you kind of got to jump. And so, like, if you want Kyle Gibson, you got to pay him $10 million in November, Mm -hmm. right? You know, like, and that's the – and so there are teams who would be interested in that type of player, but they don't want to jump, you know? And so you that 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 pauses the market in, in some ways. Like we sort of know where everyone's gonna fit in within these barriers. We kind of see it. Um at least on the pitching side, but it will take time, you know, for the aggressive clubs and the you know the patient clubs or whatever to uh you know to to sort of figure everything else out. So what's the premium they're paying then, right? Because like you know, one for ten in November is what later on. What's well, the difference? So if you go by the fan graphs crowdsourcing, uh, their crowdsource has been pretty okay uh, so far. Uh, they had 112 for Gibson and he got 113, right? Oh, he got 13? Yeah. Who, might, one, who got 10? Maybe it was Lance Lynn. One for Lynn 13. Got 10, I thought. Uh, oh, Lynn, well, hold on. He, is he on the. Lynn got 11. Oh, what, where am I looking at? I just had bad numbers. Yeah. Well, let me go to the second page of the free agents by war. Gibson uh, got 10, according to baseball reference. Uh, the fa- the crowdsource for Lynn was 110. He got 111. So I guess yeah. the premium's an extra mil. That's his quote. You can get an extra mil. <laughs> you know what that's from. It's always like, it's always just, just certainty. Man. Which right? I mean, it's always you know, like, yeah, right, right. And I, I don't, I, I feel like that shouldn't be totally underrated, but like, no. I get, you know, I mean, it's, it's good. Like when you're broadcasting to the world, we need arms. 
Yeah. Right. Like it, it <laughs> certainly does kind of increase a little bit of pressure. So the certainty aspect of it can't be totally dismissed. Right. But yeah. And it also frees you up to do other things. Mm-hmm. So like, it, like just in terms of the mental space of thinking for like, OK, do we want to make a trade here? Do we want to pursue this player? Blah, 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 blah. You don't have to be, you know, constantly thinking about filling the, the fourth and fifth spots. It's just certainty and allows you to maybe make, you know, more informed decisions down the road. So let's attack it this way. What kind of team would be interested in, say, like a Marcus Stroman and Eduardo Rodriguez, someone who might not be the best long term investment, but, you know, for the first year or two yeah. of their contract, what kind of team would want a pitcher like that? <laughs> would it be a team with, say, older positional core with a closing window? Because that sure describes the Cardinals. You know what I mean? Like they, yes, maybe if, if who cares what the pitchers are doing in three years, if Goldschmidt and Arenado are old or gone or whatever, uh, maybe now is the time to just throw caution in the wind and say, no, 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 we want the Kyle Gibson, but we want to step up and that's Eduardo Rodriguez or something. Like that. Yeah. I just think that the price point for Eduardo Rodriguez is so completely different. Sure, uh, but... Then it would be okay, but it's like you're talking about like a five year contract potentially. Yeah, but I mean the Cardinals should pay it because last year was such a disaster. That's like that's. I don't a... agree with that. You don't? No, okay. I don't. I I, I don't. Yeah. I mean, I just right. I don't foresee. I don't want to lock in a number three, number four type starter for his downside years just because we were really bad last year, right? Like fair enough. Um, I do think I think though that if you are a team like the twins like the reds like you know maybe even the orioles who doesn't want to play at the in the yamamoto market but could probably use another arm someone like stroman would make sense you know someone like rodriguez would make sense where you're looking for you know mid rotation stability with you know upside especially in stroman's case where there's times where when he's healthy he's pitched like closer to a you know, an elite three type of number two. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I think those are the teams where if you're not going to, you're not going to spend, you know, 200 million or whatever it's going to take to get Blake Snell, but you need arms like that makes, those should be the teams in that sort of pool. Got it. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, do we know where Otani's going to sign yet? Uh, I mean, I know. <laughs> I've heard, but I can't say it. I'm sworn to secrecy. Who knows, man. You know, uh, Man, the I Twitter think... hijinks already with him is just like out of control. Like the the fakes it. and whatever, like the uh, ooh, we're here and stuff, and then nothing comes. By. Like it's just you knew it was gonna happen, and like you know, if the hot stove were just like Twitter nonsense about Otani, well, yeah, it is burning hot because it is everywhere. What is I? I don't see any of this. Like I don't. Maybe it's maybe it's possible to just like I don't cure. I've curated my feed so. Oh long. yeah, you've curated your feed. There's already been fakes. Like some knucklehead oh. put a Dodger logo on a on a plane. You know, oh, the Dodgers. But how do you how do you see that? I'm a pizza eater. I have oh, to see this right. stuff. Okay. Okay. Okay, because okay. then I have to be the one to go. Hey, we're gonna read about this. Uh, and yeah, I hear okay. the eye roll on the other end of the phone. Okay, right. yeah. Okay. So, All right, just checking. Like, you know, like I'm that person. Now, I just so. don't know how. I don't come across any of this stuff. Well, good for you. Well, let's start a fake. Like, uh, <laughs> no, I heard. Let's not start. I a fake. heard that no. Elon Musk was using the Boring Company to go underneath Oracle Park to build a tunnel specifically for uh, Otani to to go in unseen. Like from Chase Center to Oracle Park, unseen, negotiate, and go back out. I've heard that. That's real. Grant, can, up, Grant, can we get a what's it? Let's get a temperature check on the uh, on the Giants fan base. What's Ooh. what's the vibes? What, what are they? What are they thinking? What are they feeling? Lots of lots of responses in all caps. Uh, <laughs> two two beat reporters mentioning this. Like they re-signed Cole Waits to a minor league deal, right? They DFA'd him because he needs Tommy John. He's still a reliever who, when he's healthy, can throw in the triple digits. People don't like that because he's not Otani. People are, how come other teams are making moves like they're going to be sated by Kyle Gibson, right? Like, right. like if the Giants, Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson, they'd be like, oh, yeah, attack that market. Like, no one's really attacking the market. Yeah. Um, so it's dumb. It's dumb. That's the temperature. The temperature is dumb. Huh. Yeah. So – I think we t- we talked about this a little bit like last year, kind of with the judge thing, when it seemed like, look, they're not going to get, they're going to try for judge and mm-hmm. they're not going to get judge. Mm-hmm. If they don't land Otani, mm-hmm. right, which mm-hmm. they probably won't because no. there are 29 other teams and, you know, he- he'll probably pick another team. Yeah. Uh, if they don't land Cody Bellinger, mm. 
what, like, where, you know, like, what, what, how, I mean, do they have to sign Cody Bellinger? Is that, I, are they in a position where they have to give Cody Bellinger $250 million and hope that he stays healthy? The only reason I am not finishing up my article on Cody Bellinger is because I'm talking to you, knuckleheads. Um, but I'm writing about this right now where it's, he's like grown in laboratory conditions to be the perfect fit for the Giants if not for his weird career arc and yeah. Scott Boris. But you're talking about an athletic, young, mm -hmm. good defender and center, power. Like, he is exactly what the Giants need. It, it, like, two, just to a T. Uh, the only way he could be better is if he's, like, 24 or something. So, yeah, I mean, that's going to be a big, big, uh, I think, pursuit. Um, I do think that Yamamoto, uh, the fans are excited about that possibility uh -huh. and you know Zaidi was in uh, was in Japan scouting him personally so mm -hmm. I mean you know that they're interested interested um but it's it's a tricky offseason to it, 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 I guess every offseason is tricky to like well build up hypes and then you come away and you've got Matt Chapman or something right, right. um but this is no different it's you just know you're not going to get Otani right Maybe you do, but it's like right. what, one percent chance. It's probably more than that, but it's yeah. like who knows? No one knows no why. One knows. Right? No one knows where or why he's gonna end up somewhere. Dude picked a like he had his choice of all thirty major league cities, and he chose the one that smells like convention centers. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like that is <laughs> you don't know what he's thinking. Yeah. No, no, and that's that is nuts. When you think about it, like yeah. this is a guy who's hid in plain sight. The fact that still nobody's like, oh, no one knows what this guy wants. Like, I mean, that's just, you know, I, I think it is without precedent, honestly. Yeah. You know, he's a player without precedent in so many ways. And and his free agency is without precedent <clears throat> as well. I'm curious, Grant, have you started writing the Bellinger story? Yeah. Absolutely. How many words is it at? Mother. <laughs> what do we got? Uh, we are 610. You can stop. Dude, 600, come on, man. 600 <laughs> words? That's just the intro. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh. I will say, when I was writing, when I was with SB Nation and I was writing, um, God, like five stories a day, right? I would use a thousand as my stopping point. It was just like I would crank out five, six, seven thousand word stories because that's the limits of what's humanly possible. Um, but here I've got a little bit more time to breathe. And so I get my extra thoughts in, you know, uh, my thoughts are interesting, baby. People pay for these thoughts. So I'm looking at 13, 1400, you know, that's my, so yeah. It feels, it feels excessive. No. Cause my thoughts are freaking <laughs> people pay for my thoughts. What is am it, I, gonna... I mean, what thought is there to have other than man, this is terrifying to try and go out on a limb for this guy. And also the team kind of has to do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I pat it all. I mean, look at all these extra words. <laughs> Jesus um, Christ. I've got uh, yeah, I'm taking uh there's a joke. I probably don't need that. <laughs> I, I put a quote from well, the contact. Don't need that, <laughs> but staying in baby. Cause that's my brand. I guess what I'm asking is, do you agree with my argument? I, I think I'm getting there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, I, he's such a fascinating free agent as confusing of a free agent as I've ever seen. And yeah. I'm not even sure if that's hyperbole because you have a guy who, if he didn't have that bizarro weirdo career arc, um, he would be getting, you know, everyone would be clamoring for him, but he had that arc. And then he had that year last year, but his exit velocity was way below the league average, like his right. barrel rate. Um, but then his strikeout rate got way better. Right. Like just, He's a bananas weirdo player, and then you add Scott Boris on top of it. It's yeah. fascinating. Yeah, the thing the thing about Bellinger is year to year, there will be such fluctuations in his offensive approach because that just seems to be the way he handles hitting, mm -hmm. right? He is a tinkerer, mm -hmm. um, and he clearly took his approach this year and was like, I am going to cut down on strikeouts, amp mm -hmm. up contact. And so, yeah, the exit velocity went down. He also had his best season since he was the MVP, yep. right? And I don't think that's an accident, right? Like there's very few players who you hear about who, who like make a, a sort of targeted change like that. They get the results and you're like, oh, that's a fluke. It's like, no, this is an incredibly talented human being who, you know, is listening to, uh, you know, kind of a change of scenery or whatever. The problem is that like if you get 
a 900 OPS season from him one year, there's no way you can bank on it for the next year, right? right. Or next but eight. if you if you get a 700 OPS season from him, he could easily be at 900 the next year, right? The Dodgers dealt with this, you know, when he was in the in the uh, you know zero to three in the ARB system, where it's like, you you know, you just hope the defense stays elite, and so in some ways, right, like his floor is so high because if he can continue to play good defense in center field, right, like that's a really nice thing to have. But the offense just fluctuates in ways where like, ah, I don't know, like jumping in bed for seven, eight years. But like, again, the Giants just, they got to do something, man. Yeah, no, it's 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 tricky. I, I, I'm trying to find the MLB trade rumors uh, staff projections for him, and I'm having trouble pulling it up, but – it, it made me uh, it, it made me like, hold on. And I brewed a cup of coffee. I like waited for it and I, I let it cool for a second. And then I took a sip and then I spit it all over my computer screen because it was like 10 years, 300 million or something. I'm going to I'm going to find it while we're talking. But it was it was it was like, OK, I'm assuming that you're going to get seven years and you know 150 no like it was a it was a big boy contract in the yeah. and i i don't disbelieve that boris is going to get it it just made me do a double take because it was way out of line with what are i was expecting are you, like are you like is this hyperbole are you serious that that, that was the, the projection was i gotta find it, it was it was a bananas projection so i i'm gonna try and find it um wow merciful. well i will i will say this i had a conversation with with a scout during the uh around the trade deadline and the scouts team was was like looking at bellinger and so they asked him to just write, write him up and the guy uh, uh, well i gave it a, all right whatever the scout uh was uh was like looking at the you know bellinger and kind of going like well like he's a plus defender he's a plus runner like he's got a plus arm he you know, has like a 900 OPS. He's cut down on strikeouts. Like this guy, he's like one of the 10 best players in baseball if he's right. And I'm like, yes, he won the MVP when he was like healthy a few years ago and he's going to be 28 years old. Like it's totally reasonable, right? If you if you take out, you know, having kind of wrecked his shoulder and all the other, he had the kind of the Bart Simpson condition, right? Where they sent him to the doctor and he came back with all these different sort of ailments uh, for like two years. But if you take out, that period of time yeah you're talking about a guy who like would be talking about like juan soto type money in free agency yep yeah 100 that's what makes him so weird uh let me see 12 years 264 million no I, well i mean but maybe you no, know no i i kind of had that suspicion but that's their projection uh they do generally good work you know i mean who's this uh, MLB trade rumors. Trade rumors had twelve years. Twelve years, two sixty four. No. No, I think I... that's high. I think that's hot, but I don't think it's too. I think the length, maybe. I mean, I wasn't expecting what Bogarts got last year. Like it, it seems like that deal is a little in vogue, spreading it out for the luxury tax. I, I guess. I just feel like though with Bellinger, if he gets that, there's an opt out after like three. Well, he's 28. I mean, he's in a different Boris. age bracket than all these yeah. guys. Boris is not going to lock him down for for into his to age 40. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tim Britton's got it at uh, six. Yeah, and 162. And and to Tim's credit, he freaking nailed. Yeah, he's on the grade deal, by the way. Like and and when he misses, it's stuff like oh, someone got an extra year or whatever. So like, yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna you know like that's who that is heavy. Grant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, and that's what I was Whoa. just like. <laughs> I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna get more than that. I think he's gonna get more than that. I think it's somewhere in between, like that's right. with with an opt out after year three or something. Sure, sure, yeah. sure, sure. This is yeah. Boris. Like when his position in the market, like all that stuff. Yeah, as like, the as the best hitter, as the yeah. young, you know, as a non, as the possibly non-O-tani. the best non Otani player on the market. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So certainly in the conversation for that, and like, yeah, I mean. I think when we talk about free agency, right, none of this is rational, right? Sure. Like, and you, you've quoted Friedman saying that before, and it's a great one. I, I, like, <laughs> yeah, I was getting retweets the other day, uh, and I was like, oh, some, some, some team signed someone, <laughs> right? Yeah, like, but so that's what the Giants aspect of it, as as you kind of started this discussion with, is so intriguing to me because I think there is something to, you know, you you got to do something <laughs> for the for that. Like, it's one of the franchises where. I feel like there's like a handful of franchises in the sport where they got to be healthy for the sport to be healthy, right? Like they got to be interesting for the sport to be the best it can be. And I think the Giants are one of them. 
Okay. The ballpark, the market, their fan base. And, and they have such a malaise there right now. Mm-hmm. And, and I think Grant, like I, I'm giving Grant shit. Like Grant has done such a great job. Andrew has too, of just like capturing that malaise, right? Like you guys have, have been really good about emphasizing it because it is a thing. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I feel like, so forget the rational part, dude. I'm, I, I totally agree. Like they got to do something and maybe this is it. And like, if it fits them to a T like better get it done. <laughs> Cause like, that's a franchise that like, I think for the good of the sport needs to be interesting. And certainly this is a player that's going to make a huge difference if they get them. So. They're, they're playing in a market where they're in the shadow of two of the greatest sports talents of all time with Steph Curry and Brock Purdy. So it's like <laughs> they have, they have to, that. They have to, uh, no, but seriously, like the, the Warriors and Niners uh, are interesting. You know, the Warriors are doing their their thing where they're slow out of the gate. The Niners are, uh, they look unstoppable, like just freaking amazing. Uh, they're just going to just mow through the rest of the league all the way to the Super Bowl. Um, I'm just saying that the Giants, that does count. That does, they're playing in a, a, a market where the other teams are really interesting. And they're not. They're aggressively yeah, uninteresting. That's an interest. Yeah, that's you know what? I hadn't thought of it that way. And like the Bay Area is an event market. Yeah. All right. It always has been, always will be. You better be relevant. This is not a place where you're gonna get all those fans just showing up. Like I think there was a ballpark effect for a while where that might have happened, like in, in pockets, but that's done with. So yeah. yeah, that pressure is there. And like anyone from the Bay Area, you know this, right? Like it, it's an event place so you, you know you got to give those fans a reason to come to that park other than it's really pretty you know one thing i'll give the giants credit for is that um unlike the 49ers they don't make excuses when they lose <laughs> <laughs> what's that just um, an excuse they don't they don't pretend <laughs> they don't pretend that like not blocking for your quarterback is like that, bad luck well it's a terrible play that's it listen you had a, a, a second string tight end blocking one of the most fearsome rushers like yeah, yeah no they screwed oh, up man. they screwed oh, up oh geez oh man variance oh no like you just oh man how do we get so unlucky that we didn't have a good backup quarterback and we but didn't block people for our get quarterback? sacked in oh. every game and they don't blow out their ucl like, oh yeah on. you know who that doesn't happen to is jalen hurts because oh, he well, protects himself at all times, and uh, the Eagles protect jinxing. him oh, now at all times. Oh, that, I don't care. A, I'm going on my honeymoon jinx. during the Super Bowl, so it doesn't matter. Are you really? Yeah. Whose choice is that? Uh, it's mutual between my wife and I. Oh, Man, I really hope the Eagles are in it now. They are. <laughs> They're the best team in the sport. They win yeah. every week, which I, I thought was the Go point. Birds. I guess for the Niners, it was to like make excuses and have style points, but that's whatever. Where, where, where are you going on your honeymoon? Uh, Vietnam. Nice. Yeah. So they have TVs there. I'll watch the birds, you know, lose to Patrick Mahomes again. <laughs> 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 Just be furious for a day. Fair enough. Uh, hey, good news is for the fans, right? So the birds are playing the Niners this weekend, and Grant and I are going to have some sort of friendly wager that uh, we need to sort out soon. Okay. Would it be worthwhile to open it up to the roundtable heads of and course. best oh, suggestion of wins course. and we'll do it because we're doing two shows next week. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of emails uh, last week throughout the week about where the roundtable merch was. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh that's yeah. great. Yeah, I put no. it in my mailbag. Yeah. Yep. 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 And I got, you know, some nice words too. like people like, hey, I, you know, just I, I love reading your stuff. So it was very, very nice. And, and oh. thank you for that. And what's the turnaround show? around on that stuff? We got to like rock that in, in Nashville now. I mean, uh, well, we're some no we don't really have time for that winter meetings start on sunday dude on it just like doing something with my face like a like a handlebar mustache for the rest of the winter meetings is that (laughs) the needle at all it does for me i just can't do that i can't grow a beard yeah so we got to find some so for the round table heads out there please please tweet at mark carig or email g brisby at the athletic.com if you have suggestions (laughs) for how we should handle our eagles niners bet we have two shows uh, two shows next week yeah i'm excited very about exciting monday in person. and wednesday in person yeah uh we might have some guests because i'm Ooh. usually like you know I'm, I'm when i log on i'm just sitting there this is great but i, I want to know what like andy smells like <laughs> that's constantly going through my head like what is what is, is does mark bathe an axe i don't even know like yeah. mark are you bathing an axe like a 16 year old going to a homecoming dance 
Wait, that's not a thing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and Mrs. Musk, man, I miss yeah. Mrs. Musk. Did I age out and not know it? <laughs> yeah, I would Damn. say when I'm on the road, I smell like Old Spice and uh, the Impossible Breakfast Sandwich at uh, Starbucks. Yeah, I, remember I think traveling I traveling on the road. Man. I had about thirty of those during the postseason. This Did year. you really? Yeah, that's just my go-to breakfast. You know, it's healthy. It's a healthy. <laughs> See, I, I miss those. I, you're I like those. eating a laboratory yeah. when you're eating. Yeah, and it's bad. No, I'm I'm slowly dying. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I smelled like Taco Bell and um, imposter syndrome <laughs> when I was on the road. So. <laughs> yeah. No. All right. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, so, what do you think? Like, winter meet. We only got like five minutes left. Yeah. Um, what do you think is going to happen at the winter meeting? Let's just do like a quick, like a lightning round table uh, where do you think Otani is going to sign during the winter meetings? I'm just going to say yes. Yeah. I'm going to say no. That's going to be my, I'm going to say yes. I'm okay. Say yes. Yeah. Okay. What about Yamamoto? Well, it's been reported that Yamamoto is going to wait till after the winter meetings. Oh, okay. Um, so we shall see. I mean, I think, I don't have any read on Otani whatsoever, no right? But it would feel like considering he's kind of in control and he can probably pick kind of, you know, I, I don't, because of the way it seems like the negotiations are, are operating where it's sort of like, hey, make an offer and, you know, we'll see if we're interested. He probably ha- might have a sense of what he's looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I don't know, it feels like the best, the biggest stage for it is just do it in the middle of the you know do it in the middle of the show um, but who knows that's just a guess like with everything with otani it's just a guess that's a guess for my own mental stability so we have something to write <laughs> you know um and that and that will also like you know it, it kind of like unplugs the drain on the market and everything can kind of flow from there yeah i i i just he's such a unique free agent that it's I don't know. I can't, I can't make heads or tails of it. Like he can wait until February and just like, I just Oof. like, he, you know, potentially because uh, I don't, I just don't know. I just That's don't like know. So 2018 though. Isn't it? Yeah. Like aren't we past all that crap? I was, well, right. Remember how I got like really tired. Like right. I think so about tired. Bryce, uh, Bryce. Harper but that wasn't again, Machado. that we talked about this briefly. That wasn't because of Harper and Machado. Right. Say. Right. That right. was because teams were not interested right. in making offers at the level that it was going to take to sign them. That's right. Right. That's and right. I think that if Bryce Harper, if the same version of Bryce Harper, the same age would have hit the market like last winter, he could have gotten that deal on December 1st rather than like March 1st or whatever it ended up yeah. being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I think that was just a time and place. It was the era of fake austerity where all the teams were, you know, pretending they you know weren't making money and stuff like that. And it's almost different. like the teams were colluding. Oh, whoa. hey, hey, whoa, hey, whoa. Hey. whoa, we're pro labor, but we are not pro lawsuits. <laughs> <laughs> we do not have the budget for that. No, yeah, I we're not pro libel, <laughs> right. <laughs> right? The pro libel. Well, actually, it wouldn't be libel, would it'd it? be slander. Like, thank you, slander. Sorry, yeah. it yeah. libel's slander. written, so, dummy. but that was that was just a different that was just a different time. Like that was, you know, that that was kind of the mode. And I think it, you know, credit to some of these owners like, you know, John Middleton, Peter Seidler, uh, you know, who just were like, that's stupid. Let's sign good players. Let's mm-hmm. sign it quicker. I think Middleton saw what a victory it was to get Harper and was like, let's do this, but let's do it three months earlier. You know, yeah. and I think some other teams have taken, you know, followed suit. And, and you know what, like we were kind of uh, we were kind of bagging on the Cardinals a little bit because we're not like crazy about you know what they've done but look give them credit for being aggressive and going out there and 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 making moves and not you know just sort of defaulting to like oh let's just use our farm system to to backfill well yeah. and and back to the cardinals point real quick because like this is where sequencing matters if they right. had signed sunny gray first and then backfill yeah. with the other two guys it's a whole different conversation yeah. right yeah. in fairness to them so the great deal was great i i love the great deal for them yeah, yeah for sure keeping with the lightning round just real quick just first team that comes to your mind otani signs during the winter meetings it's with the so Dodgers. Dodgers. What about you, Andy? Texas Rangers. Texas Rangers. I'm going Giants. I, I don't I, care. I'm kind of feeling it a little bit. Like I can just, I have a second choice? Sure. Colorado Rockies. <laughs> that would rule. That would rule. I'm a, a Brewers. You know, just <laughs> yeah. Just like no, we're not rebuilding. All those reports are wrong. We got Otani. Like, eat it, Council. Here comes My second Otani. choice is the joke. Angels. I mean, I, honestly, the incumbent. 
always has an advantage. Mm, we shall see. I don't know. I actually yeah. think they do in this case, right? And we've talked about this. You said this from the beginning. We, like, dude, there's there's not a price tag you can put on knowing exactly what you're going to get if yes. you show Shohei Otani. Okay, so like that. Let's not underrate that. He like they he knows that he is the assistant GM of the ball club <laughs> for for as long as he's wearing a uniform, and that's not nothing. Yeah. So, And, you know, we say we don't know what he wants. Maybe he, and this is like not snark, but like creature comforts, just knowing what what Mm -hmm. you're going to get day to day. That is very important to some people, like very, very important. So I don't know. Well, you know what? He has earned this right uh, by reaching free agency. And for that, we salute him. Uh, And Grant, I wish you the best of luck in your free agency as well. Yes. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. The ultimate Brisby. Yeah, it's on, baby. Come on, come on. Let's go, let's go. All right, so this has been episode 75 of the Roundtable. We'll be back next week. We have two shows next week. Two shows from the winter meetings. Uh, we got, I mean, am I going to spoil it by saying that the, the barbecue boys are going to be making another appearance? Um, I don't think that's a spoiler because no one cares. Uh, and this time, anything else to do. I mean, so it depends not. if I can get there in time for a preschool pickup. <laughs> that's it, though. I'm going to, I have flashcards. Uh, one's got Jake's picture on it next to his name, and one's got Jordan's picture on it next to his name. And I'm gonna go, okay, Jake, Jordan, Jake. Jordan, <laughs> go. I'll be ready, man. I'll be prepared. <laughs> Brian, we will have juice boxes. Yeah, there baby. They seem like the kind of guys who turn the Capri Sun upside down and go boom. Oh, for is, sure. A hundred percent. Chaotic uh, evil. All right. This has been episode 75 of the round table. Back next week, twice. We'll talk about baseball because that's what we do. See you then.